These are the Diamond Articulators by Black Diamond. And I'm just going to go over some of the features. One of the key features is this uh, sturdy, durable hinge. And when you flip it open all the way, it'll de-articulate itself. So you're not pulling open and busting these hinges because it forces itself apart automatically. Pull open and apart. And to put it back in, you come to the same angle, snap it together, bring it forward. And another feature is these pin caps, which you can see when you pour it up, the pins you're not using, the pinholes you're not using, you leave these caps on, and that'll allow a little air dam so stone doesn't fall flow into these holes because it's that it can't flow into because the air pushes it back up. So after you determine which pin you need, you go ahead and just use your finger and just break these off. That way you can put the pin in and when you're working with the model, if you need that section out, you just push up up there and it comes right out. Same thing with any of the sections. So it makes it easy to get things in and out. The pins that come with it are specially designed. If you can see on it, it has a cylinder shape down here. So it holds nice and tight down at the bottom and also at the top at the same time. That'll give you the most stable die and your contacts will be really, really good. They're, they're actually the best I've ever seen on any model system because of the special design of the pin and the pin hole. Another feature we have is if you have an anterior or a posterior where you're afraid it might wib wobble a little bit or if you're doing a three unit bridge back here, we have the anterior stops. You just slide the diamond in there, just line up on the bottom somewhere. It won't go through because the diamond on the other side is shaped differently. And you just put a little drop of glue on there, squirt it with accelerator, wait a minute, and then it'll be set. And make sure you do it on the opposing side. That way it's not in your way when you're working on the on this one. Another key feature to these are the pin placement guide. Each one of these circles around the pinhole represents a tooth. So if you're doing a first molar, you know it's going to be in that one. Second molar, first bicuspid, second bicuspid, uh, cuspid. So it makes it really easy to line up. So after you pour the opposing, when it's still wet, you can just look down on it and line it up, see exactly where the pin's going to go, and line it up so the pin will be in every single tooth. So you can have really good pin alignment. You won't have any pins on, pins on the margin when you're cutting the dies out or anything like that. Then go ahead and pour the opposing. Blob some over the pinholes like that, and then just put a s small extra layer on top to make sure you have enough stone, and just flip it over and kind of keep that arch matching the tray. When you flip it over, you can look straight through and see lighting's not that great see that the teeth are going to line up right where the pins are and so you let that set a little bit and then use a little tool or something to clean up the sides extra stone off the sides okay just make sure there's enough room so when you pour the opposing or the stone model side, there's enough room. So you don't want the depression too high or too low. Just get it right about in the middle. So you know there's enough the dies are gonna be thick enough. And then once again you look straight down the bottom. And the pinholes line up with the teeth. Okay, so the opposing is set. And you've cleaned it off before it's set up. And you will you've aligned pinholes 
to each tooth and there's room for the stone. So now we know we're going to use this second molar and then so there's going to be a pin there and you put a pin next to and about two away. So there'll be two pins in this section. So you break out those caps and then just stick the pins in. Push them down as hard as you would want to have to push in a die. So not too hard and not too soft. And so those will line up. And so then you pour it. Okay, got your impression. I gave a little spritz of deep up lies or water. Just to moisten up the impression. It. Kind of wiggle it over the pins so the stone goes around the pins. I usually tap it a little bit like that. And then pour just a little bit on, more on top. And then flip it over, you get a parallel like that. If you squish it down too far, then when you take the impression out, it might spring open a little bit, and so you have a bouncy bite. But if you keep it parallel, then uh, it won't happen. You should take an instrument, spatula, whatever. Clean up the excess. Just like that. I'll let it sit. So now, both sides are set up. You just wiggle it and pull them apart. And there you have the case. And to get these parts out, you just twist it back and forth. They'll loosen up. Same thing with this one. Like that. You can buy one we buy one of these hammers from us and you just hit it right there. I just kinda of hold on the stone and then put up a finger on the tray and just tap it and it'll separate. Now we just turn these up. Okay, so you've got your sections. They're trimmed, poured, and dried. So you can put the posing back in. So now we need to cut this. So you can either just put it down, use a jeweler saw, and cut through the through this. Just don't cut too deep into the plastic, but you can cut into the plastic a little bit. And if you do, just make sure where you cut it that it's cleaned off. The little pieces of plastic aren't sticking up because that's going to hold up the stone. Um, so if you use this jeweler saw, just clean up. The plastic after you're done cutting it, but if you use handpiece, like that, and then just get the cuts. And any kind of small sharp areas that might break off during fabrication. Blow that, make sure all the dust is out. There you go. It's really nice because this is really clean, there's not that many holes, there's just amount of, enough holes for the teeth. So when you're cleaning out, it's easier because there's not a lot of pits and grooves and stuff. The stone dust can get caught in, so it, you'll, your models will see better. So that's it. Now, sometimes when the patient bites in the impression, 
you know, they bite, they bite crooked. And with this system, the exact way the patient bites in the impression is exactly how you're going to get it. And it's usually lined up pretty good, so you don't have to do any adjustments. But if the patient does bite crooked, um, I'll show you how to adjust it. Um, we have, we sell these heat guns, which will heat up the plastic hinge. And do vehicle posing right on that angle. It might take maybe 30, 40 seconds. The heat gun's already hot. If you do a second one, it'll be faster, but the first one takes a little bit for the heat gun to heat up. But you really need to get to flow nice. That way, when you hold, when you twist it and hold it, you know it'll, it'll hold that position. So get it to where it wiggles really nice. And then you can realign it, move it wherever you want. And then just hold it there. Um, don't recommend putting it in water because it cools a little too fast so it shrinks. But you can take care of hose. Pull it off a bit so it sets. And then your bite will be correct. Now, sometimes it's way off, so you might have to uh, either heat this one and then heat this one also, or if it's like totally off, then you might just have to break those pins off and then just use plaster and mount this wherever you need it. You can hot glue gun it, and then just without those pins there, you can just put it wherever you need to. And now if you've got a single-sided impression, you can still use this system. You just get some of that dental putty, and you just stick it right on the tray. And then use that to hold it in place so you can align your pins. So get that set up where you want it. Make sure you got enough room. And then you go ahead and uh, put the pins where you need and pour it up.